There is no other city in Northern England says could meet evil quite. Did I say quite twice? There is no other city in Northern England says medieval quite like York, with extraordinary cultural and historical wealth. This is the perfect place for you to be. Imagine a city with Roman roots and a Viking past, where ancient walls surround contemporary independent shops and vibrant eateries, and there's a festival for every month of the year. Perfectly placed halfway between London and Edinburgh, York is unlike any other English city. If you're a history buff, I think York is a very fascinating place to be. I am currently standing in front of York Minster, which is basically a cathedral church that has English Gothic architecture with its over 800 years old stained glass. It's very extraordinary. I've been here since I was probably about 13 years old. Or, no, probably <laughs> younger than that. Maybe that like was 10 50 years ago. Years ago. Yeah, 50 years ago. I'm an old man now. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's nice to have the opportunity to like come back here with Shifa because otherwise I probably wouldn't have come here myself. True. Um, but it's really beautiful city. I remember like coming here when I was, I think, in primary school. I was probably like seven years old. Mm. I think when I came here, it was like my first school trip. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's it's a tourist-oriented city, I think, so it, look, yeah, it feels yeah, yeah. very and safe so, like, and all of that. Like this cathedral, the uh, what's it, York Minster, is um, incredible, and there's also lots of interesting museums as well. Today is the first sort of uh, lifting of restrictions, so from today, pubs are open and shops are open. But we can um, only dine out. Yeah, but we can only dine outside. We picked the perfect day today because with the sunny yet a bit cold weather, with the very first day of every cafes and shops are open, people can dine out. It creates this, this atmosphere that is so fun to be out and about. Founded by the ancient Romans, York long history and rich heritage is carefully woven into every brick and beam. If you come here, you can see the cafes, museum, restaurant, as well as its traditional pubs tries to maintain to its heritage. Walking down the shambles, a street full of old Tudor buildings that lean in to greet each other, which to be said that according to J.K. Rowling, this gives her an inspiration of Diagon Alley in the Harry Potter books. It's incredible. With overhanging timber frame buildings, some dating back as far as the 14th century, the shambles in York used to be an open-air slaughterhouse and meat market. The meat was hung up outside the shops and laid out for sale on what are now the shop window buttons. Some of these can still be seen outside the stylishly curated shops, even though the last butcher shut in 1872. I'm so used to traveling alone to off-beaten track and I think sometimes it's a very rewarding experience. However, at the same time, being a tourist in a more tourist-friendly type of place like York is also a nice distraction and complementary to different kind of traveling experiences. Oh, and 
anything. I used to live in China from 2017 and 2018, over about over a year, uh, one year and a half. Anyway, so I'm so excited. This is something I've been dreaming of drinking. It's not funny because all the way to England and then I'm trying to get bubble tea, but I think it's just one of those things that you crave for. I don't forget my Asian roots. So we're now on the Roman walls in York, which you can come and walk on. We're doing a very sort of tourist, touristy trail kind of trip of York. Which is fun, actually. Yeah, it's really fun. It's nice to be like a tourist in your own country because yeah. you don't really get a chance to do that. <laughs> and also, I think everyone is also sort of excited to finally be able to shop, to eat um, outside, drink here and there, and then just have a bit sense of normality. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's a lot of people, a lot of people out on the streets and particularly the pubs today. Yeah. <laughs> How are you enjoying York so far? I think it's very cute. I like the medieval feeling and, you know, the Romans walls and architecture. And certainly this is the perfect time because everyone's open. And for the first time after four months, I get to experience the real English feeling. Sort of a shame because this looks really beautiful, but then this does not look so beautiful. <laughs> they could do with some uh, new air. Renovation indeed. Yeah. So apparently these medieval walls are the longest sort of... City walls. Yeah, longest city walls in England. And it's about 2.1 miles, so you can spend a couple of hours like walking around the whole thing, whereas we've just walked a little bit of it. We're not going to do the whole thing today, because <laughs> um, we've got quite a lot. A lot to do, hopefully. But well, I think it's quite interesting because the, the York city itself um, it's quite modest in terms of size, mm. so you can easily walk around and feel the idea of how is it being a tourist. Yeah, no, it's like it's like Manchester. They're both like very easy. You don't need to pay for transportation to get around yeah. them. You can just sort of come here and just go yeah. everywhere on foot, which is really nice. Which means that you can burn off those calories. Yes. <laughs> The idea of coming to Europe came about when I realized I only have about a week uh, before leaving the country because I have a trip coming to Serbia and uh, there, there were not many cities that can be done within day trips whereas you know English countryside stuff like that usually requires you to have your own car to navigate around and whatnot and uh, I think it's quite nice look at this city walls with lots of daffodils. It's very colorful and lovely. If you like visiting museum, I think Europe provides a lot of great alternatives to different museums for you to visit from York Castle Museums, National Railway Museums, even to Jorvik Viking Center. So we're pretty, I mean, we've sort of walked around the main touristy bits of the city and we're getting mm. kind of tired. So what we're going to do now is try and find a pub because I haven't been to an English pub in over two years. I've never been at all. <laughs> and you've never life. been? You've yeah. never been? It's an um, interesting idea, I think. Uh, mm. You mentioned a lot of it, like I would like for you to experience pub and mm. stuff like that. So it's, it's, not, it's not quite like, I mean, there's only places to sit outside, but I'm sure hopefully we can find somewhere nice to have a drink, to relax. Yeah. It's quite interesting to be in the crowds like this because I think due to the lockdown that has happened in England for months and months and it's as if people has been so restricted and today being the first day that people are allowed to even eat out and drink outside of uh, the pub or cafe zone like that it's packed with people we can't seem to even find any pubs that are sort of like have enough space for us to eat and drink I'm not used to like staying like this as in hanging out and enjoying the time and the sun and whatnot and then I'm sort of very new to this kind of idea of 
hanging out, right? And I think sometimes it's 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 nice to have a bit of different experiences during your travel to have a, and to get a sense of little appreciation towards different things. In Asian region, we are so used to hanging out outside by eating street food, right? Whereas in uh, like England, the UK, or European countries, there are barely any street food, none basically. And this is how people actually. Uh, hang out uh, by the pub, drinking, and then especially um, when it's warmer like this, it's quite lovely just to spend time with your friends and whatnot. And and I think this kind of experiences give you a little bit of appreciation towards different kind of sense of traveling, different culture, and doesn't mean that one is better than the other. We're initially we're thinking about getting pop food and getting some warm good meals, but since this is the very first day out of lockdown everyone is out and every place is are cramped and it was pretty difficult for us to get drink to get a table for a drink let alone food so we'll try to head down back to the train station and get some food out of somewhere else so starving and stumbling upon this fish and chips shop <laughs> I was just I just need some food and I know this is not the kind of exciting Asian type of street food and I think this is part of traditional way of British fish and chips because they put salt and vinegar I can't even smell the vinegar from here it's quite strong I was already so keen to put on chili flakes or any kind of spices in it but no, let's try to do it the right way. <laughs> oh. Mmm. 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 <laughs> so <Good>. hot. <laughs> it's actually good. Mmm. Mmm. I think that will do. We're back at the York train station and I hope that you sort of enjoyed this laid-back touristy type of video of York being the medieval city, city of the northern England and uh, yeah let me know what you think down in the comment section below thank you so much for watching da. I said da bye <laughs>